Dr. Leona Godin, who is a writer and performer whose one woman, two voice, three act autobiographical treatment of Helen Keller's time on vaudeville, it's true, called The Star of Happiness, just finished its second run at Horse Trades Crane Theater and is looking forward to touring next spring. Godin is a regular adjunct and occasional faculty at NYU. Recently, she appeared at the New Yorican with Kick Assonance and the 92nd Y Tribeca with Sideshow Goshko. She has also performed on the Moth main stage and at Tell Your Friends, The Liar Show, and at many music venues around the city, both with her former band Gutter and Spine, and currently as a solo act, which can only be described as an avant accordion brain smash. Please welcome her to our stage. Stay there, stay out of my spotlight. dark and stormy summer in Paris? What? We were cold, wet, and miserable, shuffling from one youth hostel to another. We could not get our asses out of bed early enough to reserve a room for the next night. Fucking Paris. <laughs> <laughs> On perhaps the third or fourth night, there was not a room to be had in our budget. We spent the night on a suburban lawn. It rained. <laughs> The next morning found us chilled to the bone and generally pissed off. Our bickering turned into a full-fledged fight, two crazy Americans screaming in the metro, two best friends making like we were leaving each other. This was very unlikely because A, we had until that moment been having the time of our lives, and B, we were pretty dependent upon one another. I, as the visually impaired one, relied on indigo to read, oh, I don't know, street signs, <laughs> train timetables, maps, none of which she was very good at because she has a really bad case of dyslexia oh. <laughs> and a very poor sense of geography, so I was the navigator. <laughs> at the crucial moment, as she rode up one escalator and I rode down the other, I yelled plaintively, Find, leave me to wander the Paris metro system forever. <laughs> a bit of a hyperbole, to be sure, but it worked. Uh, we made up, and uh, we made a plan to get the fuck out of this shithole of a town called Paris. <laughs> we would take a night train south to warm weather. She read the train times to me. Strasbourg, uh, 2330, nope, that's east. Uh, uh, nice, 2344, no, that's the wrong south. We need to go towards Spain. Biarritz, zero o'clock, yes, that is our train. We did a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> Bought a couple of fromage, jambon sandwiches, and hopped on our train. It was totally packed. The corridors were lined with people sitting on their luggage, and when I say people, I really mean guys our own age. It didn't take long for Indigo to notice that as far as the eye could see, everybody on this train seemed to be young men our own age. Fluent in French, Indy asked the guy next to her where they were all going. He told her that they were leaving to start their two-year compulsory military service. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, on this midnight train out of Paris were 600 18 to 20 year old young men leaving to serve two years in the military and our 18 year old girl selves. 
Indy jumped up and said, wait here, I'm gonna go find us a home. Now Indy is no good at maps or geography, but she is a master at sizing up the relative coolness of any situation anywhere in the world. It was on this trip that we called her superpower the Indy Scope. <laughs> it can be a verb too. So she went off to Indy Scope while I leaned back and relaxed, gazing to my left down the corridor of heads. They all seemed to be looking at me, all smiling, all gorgeous. Speaking no French at all, I gave the heads a little wave and the train took off. Indy returned, grabbed my hand, we went careening down the crowded corridor. She explained how she had gone from compartment to compartment, throwing open the doors, thrusting her head in, Indy scoping, and then slamming them shut again. Ultimately, it was her ears, not her eyes, that had found us our new home. Emanating from one distant compartment, she'd heard one of our three soundtracks of the summer. This is a while ago, okay? The Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique. I was amazed! <laughs> French boys usually have such terrible taste in music. <laughs> After thrusting her head in to make sure that everything looked as good as it sounded, she announced, On arrive! We're coming! And indeed we did. <laughs> Besides the Beastie Boys, there was whiskey, beer, weed, lots of cigarettes. Uh, we squished between three or four guys on facing sides of the benches, and after the usual formalities, names exchanged, booze offered and accepted, smokes all around, a mad conversation ensued in which she translated fragments. They massacred English, and I blurted out bits of pop culture, cognates, and newly learned expressions like a champ. Putain, bordel du merde! <laughs> which loosely translated means whore of a whorehouse of shit. <laughs> Everyone laughed. I mean, what's more charming than a foreigner shouting well-timed obscenities? <laughs> I was happy as a clam. Even better when I realized the adorable dude to my left seemed to be giving me particular non-verbal attentions, making sure I always had a beer and a lit cigarette. At some point, the light went out all trembled, expectant. I put my head on his shoulder. Then slowly, very slowly and sweetly, we began making out. Ah, it was so French. <laughs> that kiss. Our arms entwined, all four were completely accounted for, so you can imagine my surprise when I felt a fifth. <laughs> Hand on my knee, guy on right wanted in on the action. After all, it was his last night of freedom also. So he was launching his own little campaign. A sixth hand appeared on the, s on the scene, yes, with a um, uh, guy on left, countered with a, a jealous embrace, and a fun little war broke out on me. <laughs> A kiss to the right, a pull back to the left. <laughs> no losers on this, my battlefield. <laughs> now, if in the shadowed recesses of your perverted little minds you are thinking that my first orgy is about to unfold, you might be right. <laughs> in the warm, dark, rustling, rumbling, petite, <laughs> compartment. <laughs> the first zipper unzipped, the unmistakable unzipping of pants <laughs> sounded forth like a little bugle. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not a little bugle, a great big, oh my god, it's so big. <laughs> mouths all over the place. But then, just then, like a bolt of lightning from Thor the Thunder God, the door crashed open, the lights blazed, and there stood Monsieur le Conducteur, <laughs> demanding our tickets. <laughs> now, I don't know how much you know 
about French train conductors. <laughs> but they are all exactly the same. They are all terrifying and very Aryan versions of your father. <laughs> so he took his time with his ticket checking, stern and accusing, judging us, we wriggling in our twisted clothing and red faces. In fact, he was so convincing that if it had been my own daddy who had disrupted my first proto-orgy, I don't think I could have been too much more embarrassed and alarmed. And I'm guessing I was not the only one. Because when he finally left and turned out the lights, we all promptly fell asleep. <laughs> we woke up to John in Biarritz, loud announcements shooing us off the train, a adorable, adorable guy to my left whose shoulder had held my head for what was left of the night now held my hand as we deboarded the train. A bit of absurdity ensued in which Indy translated our goodbyes and explained my visual impairedness as she wrote down my address for him. None of us breaking the lovely illusion in a, of a future in which we would write each other, although we could not now at present talk to each other. <laughs> Then, in the warm, shimmering glow of the southern sunrise, the train station was suddenly deserted, but for the three of us. Indy said later she would never forget how sweet we had looked, kissing goodbye with our enormous backpacks. It was almost a cinema moment of yesteryear, the young soldier going off reluctantly. <laughs> the his country takes care of his girl, will they ever see each other again? <laughs> the movie kiss ends and he trots off to join his companions, Indy and I, face the other direction. Arm in arm, we walk off into the sunrise to look for an open cafe, a plan and our next adventure. <laughs> Thanks a lot.